Good morning. Uh, I welcome you to Faith and Home with Pastor. Today is January 31st, and uh, we're going to continue our study of the book of Romans. We're actually in chapter 14 right now. Uh, so once again, good to have you with us. We're in the season of Epiphany. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to uh, the end of Epiphany, which is Transfiguration Sunday, and then entering into the season of Lent. Uh, but I want to want to start with prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this another opportunity that we have to study your word. And and as we continue uh, in Romans, uh, we're actually talking about uh, causing offense and and uh, doing things that, that, that might be offensive. And, and dear Lord, help us to, uh, to, to know what we ought to be doing uh, out of love. You know, so dear Lord, we pray you will guide our actions that, uh, that we are respectful, uh, treat people with dignity, not be judgmental, uh, but, to, but to love unconditionally, Lord. I would pray everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Because of the, the greetings that, uh, that, that Paul has in chapter 16, uh, there's only 16 chapters, and at the very end he has his greetings. And you can tell from those greetings that, that, that Paul knows a lot about the church in Rome, even though he had never visited the church. In his letter, Paul would usually address problems that existed within the church. Uh, if the problem stated in Romans chapter 14 is the only problem in the Roman church, then the church is doing quite well. And, uh, and what we're going to be looking at is unity. Unity really is the issue uh, that we have in Romans 14. So I want to begin with the first eight verses. Now, as for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinions. One person believes he may eat anything, while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats. For God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls. And he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteems all day al days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord, and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives himself alone, and none of us dies himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the, the Lord's. You know, really, once again, talking about, about unity, the church is made up of some people who are strong in the faith and some who are not as strong. As Christians, we should never pass judgment on others over disputable matters. You know, there are a lot of things that, that go on in the church and, and, uh, and traditions that we have. Uh, they become traditions for a reason, uh, that, that they seem to, to work well and, and help us in, in our faith, and, and especially within a church. Churches oftentimes will do different things, and, and, uh, and, it's, and sometimes it gets to a point where we do become very judgmental, that you have to do it a certain way. If you don't do it a certain way, you're not you're not a good Christian. And and uh, the word that 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 we use uh, in the church that talk about talks about disputable matters is called adiaphora. You know, adiaphora means indifferent. You know, some churches may have the lectern on the right side of the church. Some have it on the left side of the church. Uh, there are churches that do contemporary worship. Some do uh, don't do traditional services and. And, uh, and yeah, you may have a rationale of why you think one is, is better than the other, but, uh, but for the most part, these are adiaphora uh, issues and, uh, and, and, and matters. And, and uh, you know, if you can grow in your faith by doing uh, something a different way than someone else, uh, so be it. You know, and I think we need to be very careful of being uh, judgmental. You know, justification is by grace through faith. And that's the key doctrine of the, the Christian faith. And when Paul refers to someone with a weak faith, what he means is that they are still trying, oftentimes, trying to earn their salvation. You know, thinking that, well, if I do this, then, then it'll be more pleasing to God. And, uh, and you've got to be very careful. 
uh, yeah, we want to do what what is God pleasing. You know, we want His will to be done. Uh, but be very careful that you're not doing it because you're thinking that you're earning some favor with God. Uh, because we are sinful. Everything we do is 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 rooted in sin. And uh, and so so yeah, in, it's not to earn God's favor. And so what you eat or don't eat does not decide whether you are saved or not saved. Uh, and and yeah, it actually talks about uh, you know the weak person eats only vegetables. It can, kind of all depends on the reason they're doing that. You know, are they avoiding meat because they think they can earn favor with God? Uh, there are vegetarians who are vegetarian for a reason. Maybe it's it's, it's, it's a health reason. So we got to be very careful in passing judgment on others, thinking that that they have a certain motivation when that may not actually be the case. Uh, and, of course, dialogue is always helpful, and communication is always helpful. The person who understands justification and faith should not look down on people who are who do not fully understand. You know, and, and, uh, and so why do we do what we do or don't do what, you know, certain things? And, and I think uh, there's three things we must avoid. We must avoid irritation. We must avoid ridicule. We must avoid uh, contempt. You know, I look at, uh, at you know, those weak in the faith or have a different opinion than, than we do. Uh, I think we need to be respectful. You know, I've used an illustration before of uh, having a Baptist friend who doesn't believe in drinking any alcohol at all. You know, and I invite them over uh, to dinner. You know, I think it would be rude for me to, to have a drink in front of them. You know, knowing that they feel a certain way. You know, and it's not that uh, I'm right and they're wrong or they're right and, and, and I'm wrong. It's just being being respectful. You know, on the other hand, if somebody comes into my house and opens the refrigerator and sees a beer for them to start preaching to me on how it's wrong, uh, I might actually stand up and say, no, I don't don't believe it is. You know, I, I, you know, I there are certain Christian freedoms. And and so. So, yeah, if someone's questioning my faith, I will stand up and and uh, tell them what I believe and why I believe what I believe. Uh, but but like I said, if I know certain people feel a certain way, you know, I'm not going to get in their face about it. Uh, I'll, I'll be respectful. I'll be I'll be tactful in my dealings with one another. And I think, uh, yeah, eating meat, uh, if it causes offense, uh, maybe maybe we shouldn't do it. You know, he, and he actually does also talk about certain days, uh, Sabbath days, and, and uh, one person esteems one day as better than another, while another esteem all days alike. You know, we have worship service on, on Saturday. Uh, I, don't, I think it would be wrong for people who worship on Sunday to say that they're they're a better Christian because they worship on, on a Sunday as opposed to a Saturday. Or somebody will say, well, Sabbath actually literally is seventh day. And so Saturday is the better day. And, and so I'm a better Christian than you are. And, and I think, I think that, that is wrong. We should not uh, act that way. Um, and, uh, but it does go on to say, be convinced in his own mind. You know, it is not an issue of who is right and who is wrong. But it is a belief that whatever is done, we do it to the Lord. If you have certain traditions, if you do certain things a certain way, uh, what is the reason for doing it? You know, and is it, are you doing it to the Lord? Uh, or is it, is it a selfish thing? Um, you know, and so, yeah, it's not always easy. When do you state your opinions? Of course, nowadays on Facebook, it's, it's, uh, I'm always wondering, okay, do I respond? Do I not respond? I don't agree with this position, but uh, is it really worth debating? Uh, it's not always an easy decision to make. Uh, and sometimes I do uh, stand up for uh, for certain things because, you know, especially regarding religion and and and, and Christianity. Uh, but sometimes not. You know, it's like, okay, is this a debate that is worth entering into? Uh, and we just pray God's guidance in that. You know, God give me the you know help me to decide what what is best, what is right. So let me go ahead and pick up with verse 9 and read through verse 18. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be both Lord, both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother, or you, why do you despise your brother? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God. 
For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of you will give an account of himself to God. Therefore, let us not pass judgment on one another any longer, but rather decide never to put a stumbling block or a hindrance in the way of a brother. I know and I am persuaded in the Lord Jesus that nothing is unclean in itself, but it is unclean for anyone who thinks it unclean. For if your brother is grieved by what you eat, you are no longer walking in love. By what you eat, do not destroy the one for whom Christ died. So do not let what you regard as good be spoken of as evil. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. You know, the only person who has the right to judge anyone is Jesus. You know, and it says, every person will stand before the judgment seat of God. We will stand isolated from others. However, if we are in Christ Jesus, we will not be alone, for Christ will stand with us. You know, Scripture talks about us being clothed with Christ's righteousness. So God the Father sees Jesus. Uh, uh, when he looks at us because we are covered with Christ. And if we have lived with Christ is life, and we will certainly stand with him in death. You know, we should also look at everything we do, not how it affects ourselves, but rather how it affects others. You know, whenever uh, scripture talks about the body of Christ, Christ is the head of the body, and people use their gifts and abilities, but it always says we do it for the common good. We don't do it for ourselves. We do it uh, as we seek to help one another. And so there are some things, certainly, that is a matter of principle. But a great many things are neutral or indifferent, you know, which is the word adiaphora. You know, it doesn't really matter. You know, I think there are too many things that happen within a church uh, that, uh, that does tear a church apart because, you know, they're really trivial, trivial matters. And it kind of talks about that as we continue with verse 19. So then let us pursue what makes for peace and for mutual upbuilding. Do not, for the sake of food, destroy the work of God. Everything is indeed clean, but it is wrong for anyone to make another stumble by what he eats. It is good not to eat meat or drink or drink wine or do anything that causes your brothers to stumble. The faith that you have keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the one who has no reason to pass judgment on himself for what he approves. But whoever has doubts is condemned if he eats, because the eating is not from faith. For whatever does not proceed from faith is sin. You know, Christian freedom it does not mean that we are allowed to do what we want. You know, but rather Christian freedom means we do what Christ likes, what he would want us to do. And certainly, uh, he would not want us to cause others to stumble. You know, uh, you know liberty is, is precious, but it carries with it responsibilities. And we need to understand uh, that we are responsible uh, with uh, how uh, others uh, perceive what we say and what we do. You know, is it causing offense? Is it causing people to stumble? Is it putting a roadblock, a stumbling block? Uh, between us and them or, or them and God. And we certainly would not want to do that. It does talk about peace and mutual edification, uh, which is another word for uh, upbuilding, you know, building building them up. You know, that's that's important. You know, uh, peace and mutual edification, that's very important to, for a strong church. And as I mentioned before, too many trivial matters uh, have torn churches apart. And, and that, that is truly sad when you see things like that happen. You know, so, so do what you feel is right. And if you do something that you feel is not right, it is a sin, whether it's wrong or right. You know, because uh, what is your motivation? You know, if you think it's a sin and you're doing it, then, then you have those sinful thoughts, those desires to do something that, that is not pleasing to God. And so that, that thought alone is, is sin. You know, everything that is not from faith is sin. And I think we need to be very careful uh, in, in, in how we uh, conduct our lives, our lives. You know, seek to do what is right. But at the same time, you know, not be consumed with those sins or not be burdened by those sins. You know, Luther said sin boldly. It does not mean sin intentionally. 
but understanding the fact that, that we are sinful. We need to move on and know that Christ has forgiven us. You know, it's the devil that wants us to, to bear a burden or to look behind us and to, to feel guilt and shame. You know, those are tools of the devil. You know, God certainly would not want us to feel guilt and shame unless it leads to repentance. But once we repent to know that we are free from our sin, we are forgiven, and we can move on. We, we can move forward with our eyes focused on Christ rather than on ourselves or, or looking behind us and feeling shame and, and, and guilt. Move on and, and do what we can to live the life that God desires for us. And once again, uh, being respectful of the faith of others. And so with that in mind, I want to conclude with prayer. Dear, dear Lord, we thank you so much for what you have done for us. And we pray that you will help us to be respectful in our dealings with one another, to be loving toward others, uh, to make sure that what we are doing uh, is, is good for our faith, but also respectful of the people who are around us. Uh, help us to speak the truth in love and help us to always be motivated in everything that we do, motivate, motivated by love for you and love for one another. And I pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen.